and I'm so excited. I love to find out that there are people out there that were friends with Elvis that maybe sometimes you don't know the connection. But I found this piece of video when I started searching, and I think it'll help me introduce and show the kind of fun relationship these two gentlemen had. So just, just take a look at this. This is from uh, backstage at Clam Bank, behind the scenes. job you have to do a long flowery intro to tell the audience who someone is but in this case all I have to say is ladies and gentlemen Elvis fans Lee Majors <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, you know you know you're in Memphis now, don't you? I got the memo. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Look at this. Yeah, I'm looking pretty good here. I tell you what, I uh, I got a couple of old guys. Well, you know, we're doing we're we're holding up pretty good. We're on the right side of the ground, right? Yeah, the upside. I was surprised we have an audience. You know, uh, a, couple of, a couple of days ago, I was talking to Tom on the phone, and I, I, I said to him, I said, Tom, what if no, nobody shows up for me? Um, <laughs> uh, you, know, you know what he said? He said, you bring Elvis, they will come. <laughs> there you are. I think he's here. I think he's here. You're exactly right. So glad you're here, and uh, that little clip we showed was from uh, when Elvis was filming Clam Bank, and, and you guys obviously had become friends. Tell me how you met Elvis. Well, it was uh, close to that time right there. Yeah. I think that was uh, 1967. Mm -hmm. He was filming Clam Bank, and uh, he was filming it on the, the Four Star Studio lot, but that's where I was filming The Big Valley. Sing wow. Yeah. And also, uh, also the producers that were producing that film was producing his movie. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm glad you got that clip, though. Yeah. You know, the way this is going to go, though, Tom, I'll get to that in a okay. second. <laughs> you, you know, you Mr. Do, Majors, you do whatever you uh, want you know, to do. I, I asked you, I said, you a Q and A type thing interview, and he said, "Yeah." <clears throat> well, I, I said, "My Q and A's kind of go like this: You ask me a question, and I'll answer the question you should have asked me." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you don't mind, I may as well start. <laughs> <laughs> it was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> Oh, no, that's my wife, Jeff. Oh, <laughs> no, um, you know, I was writing, I'm writing a memoir, uh, and I have been for the last two, three years, and I just suddenly finished Elvis's chapter about two months ago. So he's, a little bit of this is fresh on my mind, and I thought, well, to help me out, I'll just pull some excerpts from it and, and share them with you if I could. Yep. So uh, anyway, uh, when I was graduating from high school in 1957, that's where Elvis was here buying this, this mansion, which he finally named Graceland. I never thought that 10 years ago that I would be meeting him, actually. But I met him in 1967 on the Four Star Studio lot where I was filming Big Valley, and he was filming a movie called Clam Bay. And the producers of the Clam uh, Big Valley were producing his movie. So he was, uh, uh, Elvis was, was obviously a huge fan of the Big Valley, believe it or not, and he liked my character. And he said he wanted to meet me. And so when they told me that, I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm heck yeah, I'd love to meet him. You know? <laughs> so anyway, I gotta go back. One thing is in 1964, Elvis was doing a movie you might know, I'm sure it's called Kissing Cousins. Well, 
he, uh, he played identical twins, and he, uh, he, 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 to give him a different look, he had to dye his hair tinted blonde. And so his bodyguards, you know, they all were watching that show, and, and, a, and a bodyguard started teasing him, saying, he looked a lot like me, like Heath Barkley, you know, the big guy. Because <laughs> that first season, if you're Big Valley fans, my hair was lighter. They made me do it because that way I would maybe be more apt to be Linda Evans' brother, who was, she was my sister, Audra, on the show. So that was why I had to tempt mine, and you know why he tempted her, his. But uh, anyway, that's how we both ended up uh, with tinted hair. <laughs> I, anyway, I was on the, they brought me over to the set of his movie where he was shooting, and he and Shelly Fabre, uh, and they were in a swanky restaurant, and they were sitting at the bar, and Elvis's character, he was doing his best to woo this girl, you know, and so I was watching from the shadows, and uh, he didn't know I was there. And, uh, but I did see that the waiters, were, they were wearing uh, these little tassel hats with the little, you know, Shriner hat kind of thing, and a little shiny vest and everything. So uh, when uh, they had finished rehearsing and went away to the trailers, uh, Arthur Nadell, the director, he came over to me and he said to me, he said, let's, let's you want to do something with this? I said, oh, sure. So I went back and I got into that outfit with the wardrobe people. They put me in the whole outfit, went to the makeup lady. She put a mustache on me. And then they, uh, when they came back, I was to slip in behind them as the waiter and clear a table. Like, they're here, right back here. I mean, they're directly behind them. Would you like to see that? Yeah, and then, that, then they would be able to see it. Let's take a look. Lee Majors in Clint It's a big problem. First night, you're the first girl I met. I thought I'd take a ride, look around. Would you like to come on? <laughs> They, uh, they call that photobombing now. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, uh, he, uh, we did, we did that one take and I was clearing the table and I was, I, was, I turned over a glass and I dropped some silverware and stuff and he just kind of looked around nothing and Arthur the director says uh, okay let's reset and shoot it again so take two uh, same thing I I did a little bit more knocked over something else and uh, they still I said cut and then they look nothing happened and Arthur said all right let's do it one more time and uh, so action, and I go in, and this time I, I, I really make a lot of, not of noise. I knocked over three, four glasses and picked up and dropped the whole damn tray. <laughs> and he did turn around, both of them, and he looked at me, and then he realized who it was, and he just started laughing out loud like crazy. <laughs> the producer directors and the whole crew who was in on it, uh, naturally, uh, they, they had a lot of fun out of that. So, you know, <laughs> practical joke started after that, believe me. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and that, and that, that uh, film clip was about during that time, because my mom and dad happened to be in town, and visiting me, and, and uh, I said, you want to meet Elvis? They said, are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, I'm right here, come on. So <laughs> he came out. He came out out of the, out of the sound stage and, uh, and spent a little time with us and everything. He was very generous and a very kind man. You know, I was very surprised by him because, believe it or not, we both are rather shy and uh, well, well-mannered. And <laughs> we, were raised, we were raised where, like here, where it's yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. You know, he, he came from Tubalo to here, and I lived across the line only 400 miles from here at a place called Middlesbrough, Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, some, somebody, the one person that lives there is here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, you can tell 
us there, you know, there our parents taught us right from wrong and took us to church, and that's the start, to, and uh, where we both uh, started developing our faith. And he was, you know, the gospel music and stuff. So anyway, uh, let's go to July 31, 1969, and Elvis. That's when Elvis made his first appearance anywhere in eight years, and it was at the International Hotel in Las Vegas. And uh, had one of the largest showrooms in Vegas at the time. The Clark County Fire Department said you could only have about 1,100 people in here. That's the official count. But they stuffed 2,000 screaming fans in there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was called the Hilton Hotel. And, uh, and Elvis went on, he did two shows a night on the property for seven years. That's a lot of work. Eight, like an eight, a seven or eight o'clock show, and then a ten o'clock show, and that's that's the uh, to do that for seven years. It wears on you, and I, and I think that was kind of a start, uh, you know, wearing down a little bit. But every year when my series would shut down, I would go in the summers, and, and uh, I'd drive over, and I would see either the late first show or the late show, because I had a little cabin over there on the lake. And, that was my hideout, but uh, he had a huge penthouse up on, a, on the top floor. Had uh, had all the trimmings, you know, and he had a pool table and a great bar, and, and a lot of great food and stuff, and you know, always some guests invited up um, after the late shows. And uh, I was still getting to know the Memphis Mafia, <clears throat> you know, and that's the bodyguards, as you know, that surrounded him at all times. Anyway, the first night I was up in the up in this room and after the last show, and uh, there everybody was playing pool or something, and and as I say, I, was, I always kind of shy. And so I, anyway, I, I sat on the couch, kind of where I could just check out and observe the scene. A young lady came up, came up, and she uh, she sat down and uh, she looked over and says, you know, like. Who the hell are you? <laughs> and she, she obviously had a couple of drinks. I mean, I, you know, I, I'd only in my like my third or fourth year of Big Valley. I mean, nobody knew it then. But, you know, I, anyway, uh, I, I said, uh, I'm just a friend of Elvis, and she proceeded to give me a slap on the cheek, and I, I, I was a little. Why? <laughs> I knew that she had a few to drink, but uh, anyway, he must have been close enough to hear because he came over and he pulled her up and he asked her, he said, did he say something to offend you? And she said, I don't know, I just didn't like his attitude. <laughs> I think Elvis took exception to the fact that this woman had insulted one of his guests because she then slapped her right in the face and said, there, now you know how it feels. Sonny, he said, Sonny, get her ass out of here. I swear, that's... <laughs> and later the guy said to me, you know, he must like you a lot to do that. Uh, you know, and I, I was kind of shocked he did it, but I thought it was classy, but it was not. <laughs> Some of it was classy. <laughs> anyway, a mutual respect was really born there, and uh, and the guys became good friends, Red and Sonny West, Joe Esposito, Jerry Shelley, Lamar Fike, to name a few. Elvis, okay, after another show, I mean, there's, a, there's a many, many, many shows. I'm trying to pick out just a few for you. Uh, but another show, uh, Elvis and uh, Red and Sonny came over to me, and I didn't know what they wanted, and they huddled around me, and then they, Elvis pulls out this gold chain, and he puts it over my head, and it's the TCB. <laughs> And uh, I said, welcome to the Memphis Mafia. <laughs> and, uh, I have it right here today. It's one of the favorite memories from uh, 50 years ago or more, maybe. But, uh, you know, all his Memphis buddies, uh, he knew them well. He trusted them well. And I think when he 
welcome me into that group. Uh, I, I really, you know, to me it was a big thing. I'll never forget that. And you all knew what the TCB stands for and everything. I can skip through that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, here. I mean, once when I was ready to go down to the stage from the penthouse, uh, just outside the penthouse door, there was an elevator. I think it was a uh, service elevator. And we'd, they, we'd bring him out and we'd open a thing and a wheelchair would be there. A red would step in on one side and Sonny on the other. And, and of course, they both were carrying, you know, pencil. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he'd sit down, the elevator would go down, it opened up the kitchen. And then from there, they would push him all the way through the kitchen, which, which is a long kitchen in the Vegas Hotel and through several other hallways and around, it seemed like a quarter of a mile. But once the show was over, then he would come off stage and they'd sit in the chair and they'd throw several towels on him because he was just sweating. I mean, it was, the trip back was a little faster to get back to the, to the uh, elevator. Uh, you have to understand this is Vegas and it's always 110 degrees in the summer there. And that kitchen was a sauna with all those full ovens going. And so through many years, there were many pranks. Like one show, Elvis got to the elevator and the doors opened and I was sitting in the wheelchair. Sonny <laughs> <laughs> was on one side, red on the other, but I had both their guns. I said, <laughs> I said come on in, son. <laughs> all he said was, holy shit. <laughs> He loved the fun of it all, and, and uh, I know another weekend when he came off the stage, I was in the wheelchair, <laughs> and Red and Sonny started racing away with him chasing us behind. The person was believe it or not. We turned the corner so fast, the chair tipped over against the concrete wall. I broke my watch all over the thing, and I'm on the ground. Red's on the ground, and Elvis got his revenge in the last <laughs> half. <laughs> One of my favorites, though, is when I always would, uh, it was on the other end of the stage, and he had a time when he would, uh, and I was always standing behind the curtain somewhere, but he was over there, and he'd come out, and he had all these silk scarves around his neck. I'm sure you've seen it, if not in person, if, you know, in, the, in the films and stuff of his show. And he would lean over into the audience, and the girls would swoon and take a scarf, take a scarf. So, I got some scarves over there from Red. <laughs> Put them around my neck and I do a little, I do a little slow motion walk out. <laughs> and, and he kind of looks over and I'm leaning down and the girls go, and he says, that's enough, Lee. This is my show. <laughs> this is my show, you know. So I, <laughs> I did a little slow motion bionic walk off. <laughs> you know, I guess that's why he nicknamed me Double Trouble. <laughs> and that was after one of his films. Uh, anyway, that, that's true. Uh, this is an interesting one <clears throat> because it's a little more more intimate, kind of. But there was a time after the first show, I, I knew I was going to leave to go back to my little cabin over on the lake. And uh, so I would spend a little time, because I know it's like half to a football game. You got to go to the bathroom, you got to that, you know, towel up, look clean. So I, I was there and uh, I said, oh, but where is L? I, I kind of mostly referred to him as L. And uh, uh, they said he's in the dressing room and there was a cord going under the door, but they said, hey, you want, want you to come in. So, oh, okay, so and as I was going, I saw a couple of little glasses and a bottle of bourbon. So I just kind of brought him in with me because I knew he was on the phone. So I sat down, he's on the floor, a small closet kind of thing with some clothes in it, but he's on the floor and I guess the long cord, they didn't have cell phones back then, you know, it was a, it was a phone that went, the line went about a mile an hour through the other hall. And of course, Elvis and all the boys were out there, and this was a private conversation, you know? And believe it or not, I, I know it was a girl, it was Linda Thompson. Yeah, Linda was on the other end, and, uh, and that was uh, when they were first dating. And 
I don't know. I guess they were getting along, but it seemed like a serious conversation. But she's coming up next. You can ask her. <laughs> <laughs> ask her. I don't know. I was told her I was on the on the floor. But <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know. Uh, also, you know, the guys are hanging outside, and the colonel's out there sweating bullets, looking at his watch, <coughs> and uh, you know. So finally, uh, uh, he came to the door and knocked. It was showtime, showtime. But while I was in there, I poured myself a little, shot a little, shot a little glass, just sip it, and I said, like that? And he said, yeah. So I put one down on the floor, and then conversation, and he'd pick it up and have a little sip. And I wasn't paying attention, but he drank that old sip. You know, I didn't know that he really didn't drink. Honestly, he didn't drink. And so <laughs> that's why the colonel was pacing out there. <laughs> anyway, I said goodbye. I headed back to the lake house. But Red told me later that um, Elvis did a lot of that second show on a stool. <laughs> <laughs> He said that was the first time. He did most of the show in stool, and the colonel was not too happy. <laughs> I, you know, Elvis didn't ever want to admit it. I, I, I'm sure you heard it, but he, he, he always wanted to just do movies, but he wanted to, to do dramas. He wanted to be an actor and thought well of as an actor instead of the shows he did, because you know, it, he just didn't like the little musical, having to sing and everything. And let's face it, some of them were good and some of them were mm, <laughs> fairly good. <laughs> but uh, the Colonel, you know, he had a stranglehold on him, believe me. And if you ever saw the movie, I'm sure he did, the Elvis movie. Yeah. But that was that was Colonel Parker in there, and Tom Hanks did a heck of a job. He looked just. <laughs> I could have swore that that, that that was Colonel Parker in that movie. Uh, but anyway, you know, he kept him doing these musicals to fill the coffers, you know, and his pocket, too. So, uh, but, uh, you know, I personally never did see Elvis drink or take drugs or anything like that. And the guys that were closest to him really cared about his health. And Elvis so always said he would not see 50. He told me that, uh, and, and everybody, at one time or another, you know, and you know, his mother passed at 46, and he passed at 42, which is unbelievable. I mean, it's such a shame. I just, to this day, it uh, bothers me. Well, anyway, Sonny, Sonny wrote a book called, uh, in 2007, called Elvis, Still Taking Care of Business. And he asked me to write uh, something for the back of the book, which I did. And I, I think it's one of the one of the best of Elvis's books. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, Linda Thompson, of course, who you will hear later, she wrote a wonderful book. And and there you can she you can get behind the scenes really <coughs> because you know she was with him, you know, his girlfriend for many many years there. Uh, but you know, and you know, several years later, that in 1976, Colonel Parker fired Red and Sonny. And he also broke up with Linda. And to me, that seemed to change him. It really did. That's when I saw that. It seemed to. I never saw him much after that anymore, you know. And it's funny and interesting because Red and Sonny, they passed away within two months of each other in 2017. And uh, anyway, this is what I wrote on the back of Sonny's book. To this day, I strongly believe that if those people had stayed with him, he would still be with us today. It's hard to be the king. get out of here early to, for me. And anyway, but 28 years ago, the good Lord uh, sent me down an angel. And she's the reason that I'm still here today, for sure. So I keep the faith. My wife, uh, Faith Majors, is here somewhere up there.